George Furbank is out. Freddie Stewart is in. What does that mean for England's chances at Eden Park this weekend? Hello amateurs, welcome back to the channel. Here with you throughout the summer series and beyond. So hit subscribe down below to make sure you don't miss out on any future episodes. Now then, England's chances at Eden Park, somewhere the All Blacks haven't been beaten for 30 years. Not, not that that makes a great deal of difference to me anyway. Um, where have they come from? Last week's game, New Zealand were delighted to get the win. I think they're a little bit frustrated in their own performance in various areas, but it got into an arm wrestle and Razor afterwards was very sort of happy that they found their way through that arm wrestle and managed to nick it towards the end mostly based on the back of getting or dominating territory through some excellent kicking, especially from Bowden Barrett, which was a great tactical choice uh, from the bench. England, for their part, devastated not to get the win. Felt like there was an opportunity gone missing if they could have just got a few more little things right. There were flashes of brilliance. Uh, the try, the Fea Waboso try, was multi-phase. Lots of good just running at holes, finding space, maintaining momentum and attack, which is really important. They were hugely competitive as well, especially in the line-out. Uh, and the defence won some big metres at times. It's, you know, it's boom or bust with the England defence a lot of the time. But it was definitely on the up for the most part last week. OK, let's get into the selections. We'll start with New Zealand, the home team, and they have basically gone same, same. Uh, first team of a new era last week and consistency at this level, at any level, is incredibly important. So they've gone the same, same where they can. The one person that doesn't make it is TJ Perinara, who got injured just before half time last week. He's replaced by Finley Christie, the Auckland Blues scrum half. And in on the bench comes Cortez Ratima, which is a wonderful name. I love some of these names. That's a brilliant one. He's not he's not a proper young youngster at uh, 23 years old. But he does seem to score some tries playing for the Chiefs. He averages a try every five games. So watch out for that coming off the bench. We'll see how much time he gets. It'll be a debut for him. The other big potential change might have been Perifetta and Bowden Barrett, uh, the 15 role. But Perifetta played really well last week, as did Barrett when he came on. So there was a there was a real choice there. You know, what do we want? What do we want to go for? Do we want to swap it just because Barrett played well towards the end and that was when the game was won? Or... Do we potentially want to keep Barrett on the bench so that he can come on again, be one of the best players and um, change the game from the end? Having watched it and soaked up tactically what's going on. It worked last week. I don't see any reason to change it this week either. OK, so that's the All Blacks. Uh, let's look at England. And again, same, same. All the selections pretty much have, have been the same. Finn Baxter gets his first start, having done extremely well off the bench. Last week, replacing Joe Marler with Bevan Rod. The Sale Sharks loose head coming in to the, onto the bench. I guess the big potential change that England might have made was at tight head, where Will Stewart struggled a little bit first half against Ethan De Groot. Interestingly, first scrum after the sec, uh, into the second half, De Groot got penalised for doing pretty much the same as what he was doing in the first half and then got subbed immediately. This week, England have made representations to World Rugby asking for clarifications on what is and what isn't legal in terms of loose head play. Uh, they've not disclosed exactly what was said or what came back, but I am pretty certain that was entirely due or designed to just put this at the top of the referee's mind coming into this game. And as such, Will Stewart keeps his place um, because I think they feel... I mean, De Groot is a really good scrimmager. I... I rate him very highly but I think they feel that if they can get him a little bit more legal they might be fine so they've given Will Stewart another chance to go for that Dan Cole obviously would have been the man to come in uh, instead but he is picked on the bench and if he gets on the pitch he will overtake Jason Leonard, Leonard the great Jason um, into second place in the all-time men's caps record with 115 so a massive day for Dan Cole uh, personally of course he's only concerned about winning the game uh, into the backs and the big talking point Furback was picked obviously George Furbank was 
quite possibly, certainly by a lot of people's estimations, England's best player last week. Did a lot of things well. He's got a bad back, sadly. Could have been one of those whacks he got from Severu Reese. Who knows? But Freddie Stewart comes in. And how does this affect England? I think the biggest thing it affects England will be on defence because Stewart is not the quickest. He's not the quickest to turn either or scramble when necessary. And I think with England's defence the way it is, that's necessary at fullback. I think lots of the other areas, um, it may be slight down in terms of the running play, but Stewart was doing that at the start of the Six Nations. He was running the ball back with a lot of vigour. He put Freeman through a hole so he could play as that second playmaker as well. That was the game against Italy, which led to a try. So I think it's it's the defence that I'm concerned about with Stewart. Um, I think all the other areas, especially catching high balls and things like that, he'll be absolutely fine. And the difference between him and Furbank is, is minimal. Will New Zealand be able to take advantage? Will they be able to get to the edges? I suspect they might even try to get to the edges even more to try and exploit that if they can. OK, looking forward to this week. But what we'll do is we'll look back to last week just to see where they've come from. So New Zealand were brilliant at the breakdown last week. Their scrum was excellent in the first half and they won a lot of the aerial battles as well. England pride themselves, or certainly Toby Freeman prides himself on getting up and winning retrievable kicks. Didn't do that at all last week. So New Zealand will want to stay dominant there. That's a huge part of maintaining territory. England, the things they did well, I would say defence overall was really excellent. Uh, I'd say that when they got the ball in the right areas, their attacking was fluid and it looked kind of somewhat off the cuff. You know, they ran at holes, they chose speed over shape a lot of the time and they were accurate with it as well. They looked really dangerous uh, for periods of time. And then line out defence as well. Maritoji in particular was an absolute nause back to his naughty best um, so they'll want to stay on top of that flip side New Zealand will want to sort out that line out prime attacking ball and they want to try and deal with the blitz a little bit more they got caught behind the game line a few times now there's a few, loads of different tactics you can use do you chip behind to try and keep the the line speed back do you shorten up your passing game so you try and make the defense narrow down and then you're trying to put people through holes do you look for places that maybe have just been vacated. For example, Ben Earl made a brilliant cover tackle. I think it was on Scott Barrett when Scott Barrett got put through a hole last week. He vacated that area inside. If New Zealand maybe look to play out and then come back into that area, anticipating that those England players are going to fly, there could be holes there for New Zealand as well. England, the number one thing is the scrum. They have to get that nailed down. It wasn't all terrible last week, but they were put under enough pressure that it was a real issue. Um, kicking as well, particularly in the, uh, the later stages of the game, they were not accurate enough with their kicking. And that led to territory uh, in the England half and ultimately New Zealand winning the game. And the last thing, and I think this one's really key as well. <clears throat> excuse me. I've already mentioned it. England need to win some aerial battles when their bots kick in. To retrieve the ball, they need to win some of those. So whether that's getting around the blocking lines, whether that's just having more accurate kicks, uh, I'm not sure, but they need to win some kicks this week. Freddie Stewart being back in the side, he might uh, get a few of those. Summing up, this is going to be another amazing game, I think. I'm just so excited about watching these two teams go at it once more. Both of them like to play. Both of them like to move ball to space and just attack what's in front of them. This is the type of game that thrills me. And I hope we get another spectacle similar to last week. It didn't light on fire last week, but both teams were trying to play that way. And I could see the intent, and that's what's most important. Can England win? I'm not going to lie. I would have been more confident with Furbank at fullback. Uh, fullback. Freddie Stewart, like I said, does weaken the defensive side of things a little bit. It's going to be really tough. But I think if England can just tidy a few things up, things that I've mentioned before, if they can just have a slightly higher average level of performance, then they absolutely can go to Eden Park and win. And I'm going to say they're going to do it in a really tight game. Less than a score. I think it might be higher scoring this week, though. I think, um, I think both teams might get some more attack on the pitch. England to win 20-something to 20-something just by a couple of points. 
Anyway, that's what I think. What do you think? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll join you there for a friendly conversation. And while you're down there, uh, could you give the video a thumbs up? That helps other people find it, uh, which is good for everybody. And you can subscribe there. You can watch that one next. And do not forget to get out and play.